American South, he's always there, fighting for freedom over land and air. G.I. Joe! Good morning, everybody. Mac here. Welcome back to the show. What we have this morning for Saturday Morning Cartoons is this. The G.I. Joe Classified Cobra Island Target Exclusive Breaker and the Ram Motorcycle. And I know this has nothing to do with Halloween, much like last Saturday, but when I got this this week, I knew I had to put this up. I knew I had to get this open. I knew I had to get my hands on this. Nostalgia is not a word I use often on this channel, but this really is very nostalgic for me. Because when I was a kid back in the 80s, starting to collect the vintage line, the Ram motorcycle, much like I'm guessing for a lot of kids when they were starting the line, was actually the first vehicle I had from the first wave of G.I. Joe. So it was, it was, I was very excited to see that the Ram was the first vehicle that they put out for the Joes, not counting the coil for the Cobras, but for the Joes, I was excited to see the Ram being the first vehicle to be put out, and I knew I had to have it. I was worried when I saw that it was a Target exclusive, but truthfully, Hasbro and Target are getting better with these uh, Cobra Island exclusives. As of the time of this recording, this is not available on Target's website, but things like Beachhead, the Cobra Infantry Trooper, uh, Baroness and the Coil, they're back in stock. So it seems like that they are getting a um, decent rotation of stock. So keep looking for this. I'd be willing to bet in a few weeks, maybe next month, that this will be back up for sale on Target. Now, we take a look at the box. It's very reminiscent of Baroness and the Coil. The same box, same big window. Down here we have Breaker on the Ram really leaning into it and that's not how you uh that's not how you drive, ride a motorcycle with a sidecar on it <laughs> up top gi joe the gi joe star c number 29 we have another graphic of breaker right there on the side you can see right there that he's actually leaning in the opposite direction so i'm assuming the gatling gun sidecar isn't there on the side uh we have that file card system that you know how I feel about that. And on the back, we have this picture of Cobra Island that we've seen a lot. And I think this is a really good picture of the island. I don't know what the different... On each box, they have different things highlighted. I don't know if that's supposed to mean anything either, but I kind of dig that. But that's it for the packaging. It's nothing that we haven't seen before. So, without further ado, let's get this open, and we will take a look at the Cobra Island G.I. Joe Classified Series, Breaker and the Ram. Okay, friends, here he is, Alvin Breaker Kibby, out of his box, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the tape measure to him, and we're going to see how tall he is, and I find this very interesting, because when you put Breaker up to the tape measure, you see that he comes in almost at six inches exactly, six inches to the top of his head, his hair takes him a little higher, maybe to, oh, six and an eighth. Now, what's interesting about that is that actually puts him a little on the short side for the G.I. Joe line because a lot of the figures come in at about six and a quarter, including the Cobra Trooper, which I actually checked just before we started filming this just because I wanted to make sure because I did think he was a little on the short side. So that's kind of interesting that he's closer to the true six-inch scale than most of the other figures in the line. Now, taking a look at Breaker's articulation, his head will do a full 360, as we've always seen. He can really look back. He can bury his chin. There's not a whole lot of tilt going on. As a matter of fact, I don't think there's any tilt at all. It's more like he's turning his head. His arms... Uh, 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 there we go. His arms can go up past 90. Do a full 360 spin. He has that butterfly joint in there. Bicep swivel. Double jointed elbows. Wrist swivel. And pivot, but... Or wrist pivot. Yeah, wrist swivel and pivot. This pivot goes up and down. And this pivot, this wrist pivots in and out. I don't know why they're doing that. Well, I kind of know why. And we'll explain. We'll talk about that in a second. But I really wish, one, that if they're going to only make one go up and down they would swap them, or two, better yet, that they would just make both of them go up and down, especially for a guy that's riding a motorcycle whose hands you may need to get in and out on the handlebars. And we'll take a look at the ram in a second. At the waist, I'm assuming he has some sort of 
waist articulation, some sort of ab crunch, because most of the Joes do. However, this heavy rubber vest that he's wearing prevents him from doing anything like that. But there is a ball joint at the waist that he can go forward a wee bit, he can go back a wee bit, and there is some side to side on him. But this vest is really heavy and really limits his articulation possibilities. This may even be heavier than the one that Beachhead was wearing. It's definitely heavier than the Cobra Troopers. Does have a waist twist, drop down legs. They can go way out like that, better than Spider Man. Leg comes forward, leg goes back, has a thigh swivel, double jointed knees with some great travel on them. He has a boot cut. Angle goes back, ankle goes forward, and a forward-facing pin for Rocker. So that is what we have. Most of your, ba well, pretty much all of your basic G.I. Joe articulation, except it's really difficult to get him to do anything at the waist as far as an ab crunch goes, which is unfortunate since he's going to be on a bike, but this vest is just way too heavy. Now we're going to take a look at the sculpt on him, and as far as the head sculpt goes, his face portrait, it's not bad. It's a decent update to Breaker's look. He always had the beard, he always had the mustache. Out of all the Joes that I wish came with a second head, I wish Breaker did, because I really would like him to have, like, bubblegum, like he's blowing bubbles, because he was always doing that in the comic book. Although now that I look at it, I don't think Breaker had the beard and mustache in the original line. I think this looks more like Clutch, now that I think about it. Yeah. Like, Breaker had some stubble, and he was always blowing bubbles, but this honestly looks more like an updated version of Clutch, and Clutch was the uh, the grease monkey, the mechanic that also drove the vamp, the G.I. Joe Jeep. So, if they do bring out a vamp, I'm going to be really curious to see what Clutch's head looks like, and if it's clean-shaven, maybe we might have to swap heads. I don't know. I'm getting way ahead of myself, because we don't even know if the vamp is coming out. But let's get back to this. <laughs> I do like the face portrait on this. I do like the sculpt. Thankfully, when mine came, the eyes, they're a little... One's a little higher than the other, but I'm okay with that because they also have the eyebrows arched in different ways. So there's a little bit of expression there. And the eyes are looking forward. They're looking straight ahead, which I really appreciate. Now, Breaker has a lot of reuse. I don't know what's underneath the vest, although it looks like, from the little bit that I can see, it looks like the torso piece may be a new sculpt. But these arms are 100% Duke's arms. We've seen them before. You can tell by the watch. You can tell by the gloves. The gloves are even the same as Duke's, which is why this pivots up and down. Because Duke has two hands that pivot in opposite directions. This one goes in and out. This one goes up and down. So the arms are definitely Duke's arms. You can even tell by the rolled up sleeves. I have a feeling we're going to be seeing these arms a lot on some of the more... Uh, I don't want to say generic, but some of some of like the first wave Joes, when they had a much more basic look, I have a feeling we're going to see these arms a lot. Like I said, if we get Clutch, I wouldn't be surprised if he has the same arms here. The legs now, the legs from the uh, hip down to the boot cut is Snake Eyes, I believe. that These were reused from Snake Eyes. You can even see right here, this shiny piece was a high gloss black on Snake Eyes. And those and the knee pads are definitely from the Snake Eyes. However, the boots, the boots are definitely new. They look more like, they're, there's no future armor, there's nothing here. These are very basic <laughs> GI-issued combat boots, and I like that. I really like that, that we're getting back to a less Battle Force 2000, more G.I. Joe look to the figure. Now, as far as the vest goes, I don't mind him having a bulky vest because Breaker was a communications specialist, so you can imagine that some of this is like communications equipment that's held up here. Um, he does need a backpack, though. He doesn't come with a backpack, and we'll get to that in accessories in a second, but yeah, let's just get to the accessories now, and you'll see what I mean, because he only comes with one accessory, and that is his helmet. I'm not counting the ram as an accessory. We'll take a look at that in a second. But you have his helmet right here, and his helmet fits him very well, actually. It looks good on him. It fits him well. It's a nice, tight fit that it's not going to fall off. But also, when I put it off and on, I don't feel like it's really rubbing paint too much because the helmet is very soft, and it opens up whenever you go to push it onto his head. I, I also really like 
the um the two tone on the visors like it's almost like it's translucent plastic it's not it's solid plastic but i really like the look of the visor now i've heard some criticism already that this looks like an apache pilot helmet and i can't i can't say it doesn't look like an apache uh, apache uh pilot's helmet but the thing is it does look like the vintage helmet. Like, this is what Breaker's helmet looked like. It was a basic green military helmet with a big headset attached to it. I don't remember if the vintage had this camera attached to the side. If it did, great. If it didn't, I really like that they added this to it. And he has this antenna coming off the back, which I remember the vintage figure had as well. And his mouthpiece down here, his microphone. As a matter of fact, I think the only thing that this adds that the vintage figure didn't have is the visor. Because on the vintage figures, there was only two sets of pinholes on either side of the helmet. And it either held a visor that went up and down for most Joes. But for Breaker, it held his communications headgear in place. Now, the only issue that I have is that I can't believe that a communications specialist even in today's military, has everything he needs right in this helmet, especially with things like satellite communications. So that's why I'm thinking I got to find something, some sort of communications backpack to put on Breaker. He needs, he needs a little something extra, I feel. And now, friends, here we go. Probably what you've been waiting to see, the Ram motorcycle itself. Now, from front to back... The ram is about eight inches from the back of the back from the back of the back tire to the front of the front tire. It's about eight inches long. Now this looks great. I have to say this honestly looks like a six-inch realization of the ram motorcycle I had as a kid. One thing that I really like is that the sidecar here, the the Gatling gun, the minigun sidecar. It even connects the same way, with these two rods go right into these two holes on the side. Let's set that aside now. And it, like I said, there's just so much nostalgia that's coming back to me for this. And the mold, the mold on the, on the ram is actually pretty incredible. I mean, like, even if we look at something like the front tire, they went to the extra effort. They put drilled rotors on the tire on both sides and even included the caliper position here on the back of the forks they put the shock absorbers in for the shocks up front turn the wheel you can see there's the radiator up front there's heat tape wrapping the pipes there is some really good detail on this even to the point that on this side you see this spot with the wrench the G.I. Joe Vintage Vehicles used to come with a set of blueprints, and it told you what all of these things were. And any time you saw that wrench on a vintage vehicle, you knew that's where the built-in repair kit was. I even like how it says right here. Let's see if, you can, see if we can focus in on that. Can we? Uh, it says instruction cover, if you can see that. Let's see if we can... No, it might be too small. But it says instruction cover right there. Like there's an instruction manual tucked back in here. The only thing that I don't like, and I shouldn't even say I don't like it. It's an honest mistake. I believe that for military purposes, this flag is backwards. That the blue field should be facing forward. Because the idea is that the flag is flapping in the wind as you're charging towards the enemy. I believe this is backwards for military purposes. I might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's a little bit of a boo-boo right there. I love the black dome piece here. That's actually a translucent black piece. You have a great control set up here. Your twin gauges, speed, and RPMs. Whenever the wheel turns, the handles turn, just like we saw on the coil, Everything about this looks great. I love this. The only thing that it doesn't do is that when you set it down without the sidecar, it won't stand upright on its own, unfortunately. However, that's when we come to our minigun sidecar here, which once again looks fantastic. Looks like a six inch reimagine of the vintage vehicle. And like roadblocks, it spins. And I say like roadblocks because you've probably all seen this, that when you open it up, it's actually the minigun on the inside. 
Now, on one hand, it's kind of cool that they included this. You get a second minigun, and they included it with the ram. They could have just made a barrel that comes out, but they used the same mold. They used the same minigun. So now you have an extra minigun if you want to display it that way. What I don't like is the implication that this minigun is Breaker's main weapon because, no, that, that's just not right. It doesn't have spot for the, it has the spot for the ammo drum, but it doesn't come with an ammo drum. Now this fits in there very well that you see there's this molded piece right here and the handle just pops in and that's what holds it in place. And then you can see pegs and holes and it just clicks together and then you take it and you make sure you go in even and there you go. Ah, that barrel's bent just like Roblox was. Oh well, minor, minor problems. And then your ram is ready to go. You know, for a line, motorcycles are the smallest, the cheapest, and the easiest vehicles to make. But it amuses me that it's, sometimes it's the hardest vehicle to get the figure to look right when you put him on it. One minor, minor, minor criticism that I have is I feel like these foot plates that they have right here directly under him, I don't know, I feel like those are in an awkward position, that they should have either been kicked out a little bit more forward, so his legs would be more forward, or back a little bit more and on an angle kind of like a, a ninja or something or you know like a crotch rocket it just doesn't look comfortable where his feet are sitting right there directly underneath him i feel like the the placement is a little off but other than that i don't have any issue with this thing i don't have any issue with breaker on it i think it looks great the handlebars are on a similar ball joint uh, like Baroness's coil, so that depending on where you put his hands, the handlebars will bend to accommodate it, so that you're not forcing him into any kind of position. I think he looks good on it. I still think he needs he needs that backpack. <laughs> That's the only thing that I can say, is that I think he really needs that backpack on there. He's a little crooked, but I think he looks good. I think he looks great. I... I can't tell you, I love this so much. I can't tell you enough how much I love this because this, between the figure and this vehicle, this so far to me is as close to the vintage line that I had as a kid growing up. And I'm just having all kinds of memories coming back to me about Breaker and the Ram cycle. And what's funny is because I'm older now and I'm bigger than when I was a kid in the 80s and this is scaled up that a lot of this feels very familiar to me that like because I grew up and then the figure grew up like I feel like I'm holding that toy from the 80s in my hands again and it has that same feel I it, it feels very familiar to me because it feels like I'm a kid again holding that little three and three quarter inch scaled toy vehicle and action figure and that is fantastic here is breaker beside the gi joe classified cobra trooper and scarlet and you can see he is a little bit shorter than the cobra infantry trooper and he is taller than scarlet but looking at scarlet man i really hope the snake eyes origin scarlet is better proportioned because not only does her face portrait look too young she's just starting to look way too small compared to the rest of the line so hopefully the the movie Scarlet will will bulk her up a little bit. Here he is with the Hasbro G.I. Joe Origins Snake Eyes core figures, Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. You can see he almost fits in line with these figures. Here he is with the Marvel Legends Captain Marvel and the Black Widow movie series Black Widow. Here he is with the Lanyard Toys Xenomorph Drone and City Hunter Predator. And I have to admit, with the helmet and this vest going on, Breaker kind of has that Colonial Marines look from Aliens. And finally, because I love them so much, here he is with Jazzwares Wicked Cool Toys Spartan Collection Master Chief and Cat. And last but not least, not to be forgotten, here is the Ram next to Baroness's Cobra Coil. So in case you haven't realized it, I absolutely love this set. Whether it's because it's as good as I say it is, or whether it's because it's just really hitting home with me, and it's reminding me of that vintage figure, that vintage toy that I had when I was a kid, I can't tell. But I will freely admit that I am probably a little bit biased towards this whole thing, just because of what it means to me, how much it means to me, what it reminds me of when I was a kid. 
But aside from that, I do think this is a great set. I think the Ram is very well sculpted. I think the Ram looks fantastic. I think Breaker looks great, and I think Breaker looks great on it. The one thing that I forgot to mention is that on the foot pads of the Ram, there are pegs for Breaker's feet, so that once you do get him in place, his feet will stay anchored to the bike, and that's really good. The only two things I feel I need to add to this are, like I said, a communications backpack and some kind of weapon for Breaker, because... He's not hauling around a minigun. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can handle it being attached to the Ram, but he does need something a little bit more less, if you know what I mean. Like, I don't know, an Uzi, an M16, something like that. I'm sure I'll be able to find something. Like I said at the beginning of this video, he is currently not up for sale on Target's website or on Target's app, but definitely keep a lookout for it. Baroness and the Coil are back up for sale. The Cobra Trooper is back up for sale. Beachhead is back up for sale. Barbecue is still on, available for pre-order. So I have no doubt that once all of the pre-orders are shipped and they get new stock rotated in, in about three or four weeks, you're probably going to be able to find this guy again on Target's website. Don't let FOMO take over. Don't go rushing to eBay or any of those other online uh, third-party dealers. Don't pay those prices that they're going to be asking for. Just wait. Just wait. And I am very sure that very soon, Breaker will be back up for sale on Target. So that's what we have for you today. I really hope you like this. I really hope everybody that wants Breaker in a Ram cycle is able to go out and get him. I think it's a great addition to the line. And I want everybody who wants one of these to be able to go out and get him. We have more coming down the line. Pretty much the rest of the month is going to be dedicated to the Halloween theme, Bricktober, and getting the rest of the Motu figures taken look at. So until we see all of that, happy Halloween, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, thank you for watching. Its purpose to defend human freedom against Cobra, a ruthless terrorist organization determined to rule the world. He never gives up. He'll stay till the fight's won. G.I. Joe will dare. G.I. Joe.